you've been following me for some time, you know that all of my teachings have to do with mindset, first and foremost. Of course, mental health. My The only reason why I'm here is because I became a licensed mental health counselor. Healing is, is in the name of the game of all things. Welcome to Mindset Mastery Podcast, where we explore the intersections of motherhood and entrepreneurship. I'm your host, Julissa Edwards, and in each episode, we're diving into mindset, emotional regulation, and the real stories of mom entrepreneurs navigating both business and family life. Let's get into it. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode. I'm super excited for season two. If you didn't hear, you know, the updates of what we're doing and how we're changing and how we're shifting things, be sure to look, I think, about two episodes back um, on what my intentions are for season two. But today's going to be our first official um, episode on how I juggle motherhood and business. And I'm going to be giving you guys the 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 real uh, ins and outs of what I do with my day, what I do with my time, how I handle the kiddos, how I handle the biz how I am trying to scale, um, work smarter, not harder in this season of my life. I, I mean, in business, that's kind of always the the goal to, um, for me at least, work less hours, um, make more money, have more impact, right? I'm not here to be um, sleazy or cheap with my time and, and my energy and how I'm helping people heal. I genuinely am looking for a better way every couple of months. Every quarter, we're reviewing what I'm trying. I'm continuously trying to see how I can make my systems better, how I can reach more people um, to really have the greatest impact that I can in this world within my time here. And also um, leaving space for the things that I really care about, like being a mama to my kiddos, right? So let's get into it. Today, I want to talk about three things. Um, I have a list here because my brain has a lot in my mind. So I have... Um, I first want to talk about the transition. So in the last episode, if you didn't hear it and you're interested, definitely give it a listen. All things on why we chose an au pair for our family about a year ago. What happened? You know, I gave an unbiased review of the good, the bad, everything in between. And um, what it means for us now that we have uh, scaled back in childcare to a traditional babysitter with only uh, 20 hours a week as opposed to I had four to five hours a week before. So um, what that means for me and my business, me and my family, that was all discussed there. But what I want to talk to you guys today is about what am I doing now with those 20 hours? You know, essentially, I scaled back a good 15 hours a week within my business. Um, and so how am I making it work? <laughs> What's the plan now to uh, have greater impact, make more money with less time, literally, right? And not lose my shit, not, not just not go crazy. Okay. So, um, we're getting there and I want to, I want to show you, you guys in real time how we're doing it. So I'm going to talk about that. I want to talk to you guys the importance of spirituality within all of this. If you've been following me for some time, you know that all of my teachings have to do with mindset, first and foremost. Of course, mental health. My The only reason why I'm here is because I became a licensed mental health counselor, I don't know, 10 years ago, right? Almost 2014. Um, yeah, 10 years ago. Okay. So the healing is, is in the name of the game of all things. And within healing for me, spirituality is... Um, it has to come with that. And I always say spirituality is not, uh, it doesn't pertain to any religion per se. It to, For me, it is the connection that you have with self, right? And so how well do you know yourself? Um, are you cognizant of the things that trigger you in life and motherhood and business? And what are you doing to overcome it? What are you doing to heal? How are you holding grace and empathy for self? And yeah, how are we healing those wounds? Um Spirituality has a big piece as to how I have strived in my business through the ups and downs. Um, business is not always like a, a, a thing that's keep going up and up and up. It goes up and down and up and down. And it is just like the game of life. You just got to keep, you have to hold the vision when times get tough. You have to hold the vision so that you can remember why we're doing this. And for me, this always comes back to the remembrance of service. The remembrance of 
I have been gifted um, these beautiful tools to help people with, with their mindset, with their healing, with their trauma, with their businesses, mothers within their motherhood journey. Um, but it all comes back down to healing, right? I, 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 and so, yeah, these gifts are not mine. They were bestowed upon me, given to me. Have I nurtured them? You bet. <laughs> Did I get my master's? Yes, you bet. Do I continue to do trainings? Yes, you bet. Yes, all those things. But it, it was with inside of me since I was born. Right. I'm lucky enough to have uh, um, awareness that these are indeed gifts and that my mission here on this earth is to spread them. And I'm going to then I also my egoically, I get to put on my uh, 2024 business hat on and say, OK, if I've been gifted these gifts, God source, higher power, universe, um, how can I make the best of it? How can I create the most impact during my time here on earth, right? So a lot of my inner world brain thinking is very spiritual, very much of service, very much, you know, honoring higher power, all the things, walking in faith. Business has been a lot about walking in faith, um, trusting that things will work out. And then it's also like, yeah, I'm also in business classes. I'm also in mentorship. I'm also honoring that I am both a human being and a soulful, um, beautiful creature, um, right? That, uh, you know, was delivered here to have grand intentions and grand purpose. And the human me, the human Julissa has to uh, help my soul reach its purpose, right? So the human me has to go to school. The human me, you know, I have to do all the human things, and then the, the higher conscious part of me also gets to tap into my ancestral um, energy, uh, my divine guidance, my intuition, all of those things, right? So I, I want to talk about all of that. And so let's start with how I'm managing my time now, now that I'm working 20 hours a week. So in, in real time, I'm, reco I'm recording this on a Wednesday. My team edits and uh, they make it beautiful of what you're listening right now uh, to be delivered on Friday mornings every week. And so um, when I am in a good groove, I like to be ahead of the content, right? I like to record um episodes that will go out maybe two weeks in advance um right now because we just had this shift i'm literally recording on a wednesday that's going to be now posted on a friday right um but after this week i'll be two weeks ahead because i have two interviews coming up this friday with mamas well one business owner and one mama i will say and um so that allows me to get a little bit ahead so 20 hours a week what do i do with that I'm going to give y'all a breakdown, like literally of what my week looks like. So Mondays, every single week, no matter what, at 930, me and my team have a team meeting. It allows us to project the week ahead. Um, it allows us to close any loops from last week of um, tasks that we had for the business. It also allows me to plan um, ahead. So at the top of every month, I will have a monthly goals kind of meeting where we talk about what we would like to work on. Um, my business coach is, uh, she's amazing. And she's always reminding us and reminding me that there is the business of today that we have to work on and the business of tomorrow. And so I've really honed in um, on kind of mastering to do both simultaneously because you have to do both. You have to do things in the business that will help you in the long run within two to three months, maybe six months, maybe even a year. Um, simultaneously, you also have to be doing things that are bringing cash flow to your business right now, right? So it's like, what are we doing in the right now? And then what are we doing for the business for longevity, for growth, for scaling, all the things. And so um, in those Monday meetings, depending on what time of the month we're in, if it's a new month, a new quarter, I will, at the top of every new quarter, I have longer meetings where it's like, okay, we're going to talk about what I want to do over the next three months. And then at the top of every month, I also have monthly objectives. And then if it's just the middle of a month, just regular, regular Monday meeting, then we're just going over the weekly tasks. Um, but it holds us accountable. No, we don't hit every goal. That's like, it's not that it's impossible. It's just, yeah, we don't hit every goal, but we have, but we're reaching for the stars every month, every quarter, all the things. And so that's what happens on my Mondays. Um, 
Mondays tend to be my longer days because I, which I am going to be switching soon. After that, I have space for either uh, administrative work, content creation, or uh, client calls. And then at the end of my day on Mondays, I coach my entrepreneurs every other week um, on how to run their businesses. And so uh, that program is called the Entrepreneur's Mind Reset. And so it's a six month program. And yeah, I meet them every other Monday. And so on Tuesdays, uh, you know, the rest of the four days that I'm working, I work Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, no, sorry, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, which I'm going to be switching soon. But for right now, the 20 hours that I have a week is really dedicated to client calls. Um, this week I had nine client calls that takes away nine hours of my day and, uh, or of my week, I should say. And then the rest of the week was, this is one hour. <laughs> Literally I'm recording this. This is one hour of my, my week. Um, I'll be recording two more on Friday and, um, later today I get to work on my webinar slides. Me and my team have been doing a beautiful thing where we're giving more back to the community where I go, uh, live every single week to give a training. Um, I guess you guys will get the first, uh, first notice officially that, um, yeah, my business is uh, shifting a little bit, which is really exciting. We did free trainings for about eight weeks on all things uh, healing and motherhood, which was really, really nice. It got to help a lot of people. I got to um, learn how to better my craft at uh, teaching strangers. Uh, for a long time, my business has been run on social media and gaining clientele from there. So there was always uh, some kind of knowingness of who was coming into my programs, who was coming into my coaching containers by familiarity of like, they would follow me online, we would chat it up in the DMs. And then uh, if they were interested in working with me, they would do that you know, within due time. And uh, the benefit of having uh, webinars um, is you get to reach new people, right? Um, we have ads that go out all over Facebook and they uh, attract, you know, my ideal client, people that would really benefit from working with me. And that's been really fun. And um, it's also been a learning curve. There's been a lot of things that we did wrong that, that we bettered within our eight weeks of trying this. And um, what's cool is that, you know, my intentions always is how can I serve the greater population? How can I help more people? So this is a beautiful entryway to get to know what it is to be in my containers, to be in my energy, to be in my teachings, my school of thought, and how I differentiate from other traditional therapists, from other coaches, because we all have our special sauce. And so these webinars is uh, are a great way for me to get introduced to new people into my world. If we're talking about, you know, like business this terms, um, it's the top of the funnel, right? It's a free, a one hour training, which honestly, it's bomb. Like, don't, don't think just because it's free, it's, it's of lesser quality. It's actually, you know how long it took me to create, there's 80 slides within that free webinar, 80, I think actually 83. Okay. So the intention here is really like, how can I best help a larger amount of people within one hour's time? right? Um, my feedback from those webinars was always that the mamas learned so much. Um, it was a great perspective shift for some that have already, some of my uh, returning uh, alumni, my my clients will sometimes re-engage with me like that too. It's also a great benefit for them. It's like, hey, you've already taken my motherhood course. You want a refresher? Come to the free webinar, right? Like it's a great, it's a great give, Um from my heart to others. And then from a business standpoint, it also allows people to come to the top of my funnel. It widens the amount of clients that will eventually one day maybe get to work with me. Okay. And um, it's fantastic. It's a win-win. It feels really good. It feels really energetic. I love being in teacher mode. I love uh, speaking to many people at once. And um, it's great. So we did that for eight weeks. We learned so much. Um, the ad world for me personally is kind of confusing. I thank God I have amazing team members. Lorena, shout out to you because she is uh, like 
my right hand woman in my business and she'd be doing all the things uh, via ads right we took a class together um she's the one who's kind of handling it and um yeah we learned a lot because it just wasn't so uh it just wasn't easy and i'm no expert in this so i'm not going to say much more on that i'm just giving you the behind the scenes of what i'm doing in my business now to help more people to have a larger reach in the people that i get to touch right and so yeah um what today i get to after this podcast episode i get to work on my new webinar slides so my new webinar slides are going to be all about juggling motherhood and business what what kind of led me to get to this place of um realization of a, of a of a small pivot within my company or honestly I don't even want to call it a new service because it's not a new service. I've, I've been doing this. I've always had containers where I've helped entrepreneurs. And I, uh, for the past two and a half years, I had containers where I helped moms heal on their motherhood healing journey. And it just bestowed upon me. I was like, well, why wouldn't I just combine those two groups of people, right? Because ironically, currently in my cohort right now for my business um clients they're all moms <laughs> and um a lot of the times i end up teaching a lot about how motherhood and business are very similar because they really are and um the truth of the matter is, is that it, it happened to me and i come across a lot of moms that whether you're thinking thinking about becoming a mother or you're already a mother with little ones and you desire to spend more time and perhaps your traditional nine to five, while you may have loved it at one point or it was a means, you know, for for income, whatever, may, whatever it may be, you, you desire to spend more time at home. You desire to not leave the house every day. You desire to have a more, more flexible schedule. And so online business um, or business in general, just on, entrepreneurship in general. Um, is uh, an opportunity for that. I think um, a big limiting belief that stops mothers from actually seeing this through is like, can I actually make this work? Like, will this actually match my income or will this actually pay my bills? Can I rely on this? Right. And yeah, I get it, girl. There's a whole lot of mindset work that has to come to become an entrepreneur, to do the scary thing. Right. And so yeah, th th this is the reason for my pivot because in my head, I'm like, well, I'm already helping so many moms. And I would say uh, maybe a good 20% of the moms that I work with for just healing eventually have interest in running their own business. So like it was already happening organically where they would go into my one-to-one -one containers after working with me for the motherhood healing program and then want to learn business from me because I'm a mama who did it with two under two and all the things. And here we are five years later, still in business, still learning, still growing. Um, yeah, they want to learn from me. So my, it, I was like, because my hours are lessening, this is where the spirituality piece comes in. And my divine um, ancestral team was coming in heavy of like, hey, girl, why don't you make your life easier and just put it into one program? Um, you know, when we had our struggles with the au pair, um, the au pair program, I would say, not like, not the au pair within herself, Um you know, I had a lot of moments of reflection of, do I really want someone to be here 45 hours a week um, to help me, you know, with the kiddos? Um, would it be easier if we could just have someone 20 hours a week, 25 hours a week so that I can get my work done and also still have some time for me, right? Like it's nice to be able to get my nails done, eyebrows done, whatever, without waiting for my husband to get out of work so that I can go ahead and do that, right? Um... And so I think the, I'm really happy and grateful that we got to experience an au pair. And by the way, we, we still have, I think I mentioned this in the other episode, but we still have four months left of the program that we already paid for. So you best believe I'm going to, I'm going to get another au pair to finish the program. But after that, we're done. Like I already paid for it. So I might as well use the services. Um, hopefully it'll be better than the last two experiences that we had, but Regardless, um, what what this opportunity has taught me is that um, I want to be um, more of a present uh, mom, even more. And 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 I have awareness that I am so blessed that I have a business that 
uh, provides extra uh, provides income to my family that has been um that has been uh profitable uh, fruitful you know since 2020 um that um has been something that provides my soul with fire with purpose that has actually helped me become a better mother because for me personally i just knew from jump i i i i don't i personally don't want to be um i don't want to stop working i don't want to stop working i love working i love helping my clients it's such a huge part of my identity um who i am as a as a as a counselor a healer a mindset coach like it literally gives me life literally um to that to then when i when i clock out of my four to five hour days i go to see my kiddos and i'm so happy i have so much energy i have so much um I'm just happier. And so for me personally, I know that um, I wanted to be a working mom that um, also had major flexibility within her schedule, where if my kids are sick, if my kids one day go to school and they need me to go to a, you know, parent conference meeting, whatever the hell my babies need, I need to, I, I need to be able to have the autonomy to be like, yeah, on Tuesday, I'm off because I'm doing this, or I'm going to end work at this time and not have to talk to a boss about it. Um, I will never forget my uh sister-in-law when she had her first child my nephew um she uh went into labor uh a little early unexpectedly and um it was our first it was my parents first grandchild like it was the, the first we were so excited you know to meet the baby and also you know concerned and I worked at a school at that point as, as a school counselor and um I had my superior I had my boss and um like my family group text was kind of going off and it was like you know uh, my sister-in-law is in labor all the things and of course my first instinct was like yeah i'm off this i gotta go i gotta go to the hospital you know and um because i truly i i am a diligent worker you know when i was working for somebody else for my entire life until i became an entrepreneur i've been working since i was 15. um i've always been a very diligent worker you know very responsible on time doing the most in the best way possible like i always want to show out um i always want to show my leadership capabilities i've always wanted to get a raise so you know my little young self was always doing all the things that i could do to make sure that like one i'm never going to get fired that was my intention at least like because you need me i'm such a great worker and um also i have pride in what i do like it's my work is representation of me so anyway all that to say when we got the family text at like, okay, we're all headed to the hospital. I quickly got to work. I called up all my students and their parents. I'm like, Hey, I have a family emergency. We're going to reschedule. And I rescheduled them, right? Like I did all the things and more. I could have just left. It was an emergency. I could have just left. Right. And, um, I remember calling my, my superior at that supervisor at that time. And I was like, Hey, um, my sister-in-law just went into labor. I got to go. I've called all my clients. I've notified the school. They know that I'm not going to be here for the rest of the day. Um, all my notes are written. Like when I tell you I was, I crossed my T's, I dotted my eyes, like all was good. Um, she responded by telling me or asking me, I should say, she said, uh, well, how long ago did she go into labor? And um, I won't share, you know, my sister-in-law's business, you know, on the podcast, but it, it wasn't, you know, we, we were, we were worried. Okay. And so, um, yeah, my supervisor had the audacity to ask me, you know, how long ago did she go into labor? She's like, well, you know, um, sometimes babies don't come out for hours. Um, she could be in labor for hours. So you don't think that you could just finish your work day? Whew. It took a lot out of me that day to like literally just not, um, not go in <laughs> on this woman who actually was a friend of mine. Like she wasn't someone that I didn't like. Um, she was just someone who was in the toxic culture of uh, work, 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 and nothing else matters, right? And and she was a mother herself, or is a mother herself. And um, I remember uh, saying to her something along the lines of, 
uh, I've done all that I've had to do. This is a family emergency and um, I wasn't asking for permission. I'm notifying you that I'm leaving the office in the building at this time. We can speak more on this tomorrow. <laughs> and um, I think like a week later or maybe like a couple of days later, she ended up reaching out and apologizing because she she realized that she was being she was acting wild. Um, and to be frank, you know, I, I after a couple of days, too, after I calmed down myself, I was I, I I was able to recognize what was happening within. It doesn't make her actions right, but it's the culture that we were in. We were in New York. Um, as therapists, you know, you have to hit a certain number of clients a week or else the agency doesn't make enough money. Um, we already don't get paid enough as therapists. So like everything's very like number crunching, very clinical, very like, you know, did you meet your measures, all the things. And um, she was worried. She was worried that one of her clinicians underneath her wasn't going to hit her numbers for the week, which by the way, I did because I do this. But regardless, even if I didn't, it should have been fine because it was an emergency. And so, anyway, long tangent, but the reason why I'm sharing is because that was in like 2018. I got pregnant in 2020. I got pregnant in 2020, end of 2020. And um, I knew even before I got pregnant that I wanted to become an entrepreneur to have a flexible schedule. Hey mamas, real quick, are you trying to juggle motherhood and that burning desire to launch your business? Well, I've got something just for you. I'm hosting a free webinar that dives deep into how you can master motherhood and entrepreneurship. Yes, you can do both. I'll be sharing the same actionable steps that I've used to help countless moms launch their businesses while staying grounded and connected to their families. If you've been feeling the pull to start that business and you don't know where to begin or you're struggling to balance it all, this webinar is for you. In this webinar, we'll unpack those mindset blocks, get you calm, confident, and ready to thrive as a mom and a business owner. Head to the show notes to save your seat. It's totally free. You don't want to miss this. Let's do this together, mama. Join the webinar. The link is in our show notes. When all this stuff happened with the au pairs, I'm really grateful that we had the money and the opportunity because of my business to uh, afford something, to afford that experience, to afford the luxury of having somebody live with us and all the things. And literally, like all of this is possible because of my business. And um, it was a good experience. I learned a lot. I was definitely challenged. We'll see what this third one comes about. And um, what I've learned is that yeah, I want to be, I want to spend even more time with my babies. And um, the desire, I had to do a lot of inner work. The desire of me wanting to be more at home, I did. I'm just going to be so honest with you guys. I did contemplate, like, should I put my business on pause? Should I go back to uh, traditional counseling where um, I know that I can make X amount a month? Uh, by seeing like, you know, 10 clients a week type thing and um, just do that until my kiddos go to school because there was a part of me that was grieving my my children's uh, childhood. And if you're a mama, maybe you can relate. Like there was a part of me that kept seeing my children grow and kept seeing me be so sometimes stressed from work and then bringing that over into motherhood and then getting even more help with the kids. So for me, it felt like more separation from my babies. It was like, okay, now you're working harder in the business. You're stressed out at work because you're trying to do so many things. And now you have the 45 hours a week of help. So you're actually spending less time with your kids. Like it just all felt wrong for me. For me personally, it just felt wrong. It, I didn't, it didn't feel good. And so when all these uh, mishaps were happening with the au pair, um, by the way, I'm sorry if I didn't know, say this, an au pair is just a live in nanny from another, from another country. So, um, when, when all of the, the troubles were happening with our au pairs that we had, I think it was like divine intervention from, you know, my, my spirit guides, my angels, letting me know that, um, yeah, we, we, we we're here to up level you at this time. It was my spirit guys letting me know that, hey, there's a better plan out there, Julissa. There's, you know, you 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 went from working 
three jobs, you know, a good 50 to 60 hours a week. That was my norm. I used to have my traditional nine to five. Then I always had two other jobs. Um, cause you know, I used to be heavy in my hustler mode and, um, then divine intervention, you know, my ancestors, my spirit guides gave me the belief, the seed that you can run your own business. And thank God that I decided to fall through with it because it led me to where I am now, five years in. And, um, it's happening again. It's like, here you are, you have all, you know, you have a beautiful home. You have the au pair that helps you. It's like, wow, you look, it looks like picture perfect. And listen, I'm very grateful. My life is beautiful. Um, and the au pair situation wasn't working out. And it was my angels letting me know that like, you get to up level again, you get to upgrade again, Jalissa, you get to do this again. And so I was like, wow, amazing. Um, <laughs> when I got the idea of combining, you know, my motherhood clients and my business clients, it was because one, they're, they're the same person. Even in business, you have to heal your wounds because um, it will show up in business. Your wounds, your trauma will show up everywhere in your relationships, in your marriage, um, in your, at your job, um, with your family within yourself it shows up everywhere and so all i'm doing is combining those two groups because i was about to cut back on my childcare hours and uh again we're working on scaling we're working on how can i reach more people less time greater impact right so we've added some team members to my team which is really exciting i now have an extra pair of hands um to help me with these kinds of programs and um more support, more support for my clients. Um, and with the less hours, um, I had to think of a creative way. And it wasn't really just me. It was, again, it was my guides letting me know that, yeah, you get to be a more present mama and you get to reach more clients. And this is how you do it. The webinar was one of those ways. It was top of the funnel. You get to meet all these new mamas that want to be entrepreneurs and um, teach them through this one hour masterclass. And she, with the one masterclass alone, it's on and popping and beneficial. Y'all should join if you're a mama looking to be in business. Like real talk, it's, it's going to be coming out soon, probably in October. We're going to start doing them. And um, yeah, that alone will be a, a gift <laughs> to others free, right? And if they want to work with you more, they get to. I'm not, I mean, of course, hello, I'm not going to stop that, you know, um, they get to. And so you get to impact more people. You get to work less, work smarter, not harder, and spend more time with your babies and no longer need the au pair, right? Um, you know, part of the reason why we got the au pair was because it fit our budget and it gave us more time. And so, you know, being, be, being financially savvy, budgeting, it's like me and my husband have been talking about what does this look like for us now when we go back to having a babysitter full time, not full time, uh, like once we're done, done with the au pair program, um, you know, what does that look like for us financially? Um, how does that look for our mental health? You know, like having less support, less care. Um, can we utilize funds to uh, pay for a house cleaner um, to alleviate that burden off of us? Right. Because it's like if we're going to be spending more time with the kids, when the au pair was here, it, she allowed us to do a lot of things for the house, right? So like me and my husband were able to run to Home Depot, get certain things for the household, um, go on date nights. I was able to be a part of a softball league. Like all of these things were feasible because we had help with the kiddos. The realization that I had was simply that, no, I'd, I'd rather spend my time with the kids and outsource someone for the house, <laughs> like someone to do our gardening if we needed to do that, someone to um, clean our home maybe like once a month um, or bi-weekly, like we got to figure out the budget for that. But you know what I'm saying? Like it, running a business for me has allowed me the, the beautiful mindset of anything is possible, truly anything is possible. If you put your mind to it, if you, um, if you believe if you believe in yourself, in your vision, within your higher power, God, source, universe, if you if you believe, if you you can truly manifest, call forward anything that you desire. Business has taught me that. It's not always easy. You do have downs, you do have low months, you do have um 
just like anything else in life, you have stressors, you have struggles, you have uh, learning pivoting moments, uh, clients may be backing out, uh, clients not being able to pay, um, emails like completely just like not going the way that you intended it to launch is not going well like all of that i have to i've, I've experienced as a business owner and i've had to overcome um you know business kind of keeps you on your toes as does motherhood the way that a business evolves is the way that a family evolves right um like i said like i was teaching two somewhat different concepts but they're actually very similar when you're a mom and you, you've you just given birth to a baby, it's very dependent on you as they should be. They're a baby. Um, so whether you're breastfeeding or pumping or even formula doesn't matter. The baby's a baby. You got to feed them. You got to burp them. You got to change the diapers. They're sleeping all the time. Like you're up all night with them. It's it's a very uh, highly, uh, you're with the baby a lot. And in the beginning of your business, that also is very similar. In the beginning of a business, I will say it's simpler. It's more simple because in the beginning of a business, you don't maybe you, you're not running. You maybe you don't have a large team. Um, you're not you maybe you don't have a lot of clients. Um, but it's stressful in the way of this is new. This can be very uh, relatable to first time moms, right? Like, oh my god, there's this there's this baby that I am now in charge of. I have to take care of them, make sure that they stay alive, <laughs> all the things. It's, it's a new stressor. But the reality is, and this is a beautiful message, a loving message to all, any mamas who's hearing this and who's maybe in the beginning of their motherhood experience, this baby gets it beautifully gets to evolve and only get more complicated and more loving. And I'm saying more complicated with love. I'm not trying to scare you. It's beautiful. They start to babble. They start to talk. They start to walk. They got they get to eat more foods. You put them in cute outfits. It is the best. Having a baby is the best thing. Having a child is the best thing. They go to school. You see their minds grow and change and evolve. They make friends. They have hardships. They have heartbreaks. Like they're this beautiful tiny human who you get to experience life with. But if you're a mama who maybe has older ones, or you know, you're out of that newborn phase, it gets more complicated <laughs> because they're growing and their mind is getting more complex and they desire things, they want things, they vocalize these things, and it's beautiful. And a business is the same way. In the beginning, when you have like maybe one to two, three clients, it's actually quite, it's very, it's a lot easier. Like right now I'm managing uh, like 18 clients, you know, and I'm so blessed, so happy for that, right? Managing like 18 clients. Um, I have two team, three team members. Um, I'm running, like it, it just, it, business got more complicated for me because I'm evolving. It's supposed to happen this way, you know. Like you also as an adult, like maybe, you know, you went from living with your parents to living by yourself. You know, like you evolve, things get harder, but the harder it's better. It's a better life, right? And so it's very relatable. The beginning, you know, the baby is so attached to you. You got to do everything for the baby. In the beginning of your business, it's you in the business. It ain't nobody else there. Especially if you're operating skinny, which is my suggestion, like to save money in the beginning, right? Operating skinny, you know, not not paying for help right away unless you got it, unless you got it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so that you learn the bones and skeleton of what you want to do with your business, the vision. And then when you're bringing in enough revenue, you hire your first team member, right? And maybe in the, in the motherhood world, when you're ready, you allows well your first babysitter right to help you just a little bit right if if you if you've had that or support from family members uh more um within like a good cadence like it's it's an expectation of like my mother-in-law or my mother or my you know um somebody my cousin my friend my neighbor is coming over every tuesday 5 p.m or every tuesday 9 a.m like it's something expected it there's for a lot of mamas that's like a big jump for them of like oh i'm handing off my baby to somebody like it's a it's a transition you know um even if you are a stay-at-home mom like you gotta you you have to have support um, or else this will be a very hard journey for you. Same thing in business. You have to have support. 
Um, so, you know, I could not be a one woman team forever. I think it took me, I don't know, I think like six, seven, eight months until I hired my first VA. And then, you know, life got easier. I had support, all the things. And so if you're not getting the gist, what I'm trying to say here is there are so many similarities within motherhood and business. And I think being a mother makes me a better business owner. I have now the drive of I'm going to work less, make more, have greater impact. How are we going to do that? Right. And so I'm going to leave you guys with a really, with a, with a great tip, uh, not tip, uh, an exercise to help you get into the mindset and the frequency of manifesting what you truly desire in life. So sometimes we can get in the way of ourselves by thinking that we need all these things in order to make it work and then it's going to take a long time so we don't know how to start or where to start or how to do the thing right like I know for me in my business I have these really really big goals and it was a little overwhelming for me in the beginning of the transition from having a helper for 45 hours to having a helper for 20 hours um in the midst of me doing so many other things of like unpacking boxes, we just moved into a new house. Like it was just my, I was feeling very overwhelmed. And for about a week or so, I lost sight of the greater plan. Because when it comes to spirituality, when my ancestral team, my intuition speaks to me, it is loud. It's very clear. It's like, this is what you're doing. You're combining both uh, programs and you're going to run it this way. And when the download, when the message that is received is received, it feels like this is it. Thank you, team. Thank you, universe. Thank you, God. Like, this is going to make my life so much better. I'm going to help so many people while still providing uh, a stable income for my family and spending more time with the kid. It was like, it felt like it was so simple. It was like done and done. And then, my egoic self has to come in. Hello, I'm a human. I have to come in and I'm like, okay, but wait, but how are we going to do this? Wait, like how actually are we going to do this? And then I got really overwhelmed because the truth of the matter is I'm flipping my business upside down, kind of, right? Like I'm creating new funnels. I'm creating new systems. I'm creating new emails. I'm, cre I'm creating all these new things, which like me talking about it right now feels amazing, in alignment, fun, um, expansive. And so there's moments where we feel overwhelmed and we're like, how the hell are we going to do this? And for some people that might result in you giving up before you even start, right? And that's what I want to help mamas with. Like, if you're really about this, I'm not here to twist anybody's arm. If you don't want to do this, fine. Um, but if you do want to have this flexibility, this autonomy, this mm -hmm. level of empowerment that comes from being a business owner and a mother, being an entrepreneur and a mother, um, that yeah, I want to help you get there, especially if you're getting stuck. So here's the tip that I wanted to leave you. Here's the exercise that I wanted to leave you with. Oh, this is so beautiful. I don't know if you guys can hear, but it is pouring. Wow. Thank you, universe. I'm going to show you, tell you why I said, wow. It is literally pouring outside right now. And I literally moved, my family moved from Charlotte to Charleston South Carolina, my spirit guides, my intuition told me to move, to be closer to the healing elements of water. So we moved, we have a beautiful pond in our backyard. Um, there's the water there. We're closer to the beaches in Charlotte. We were three hours away from beaches. Now we're about 45 minutes away. And um, I think it's really... <laughs> Uh, the universe, I think, is trying to tell me that this is an alignment and this is a really good move for you, for the kiddos, for the family, for the business, because what water, this, the element of water keeps showing up for me as a sign of you're on the right path. And here I am talking to you guys. I think I'm always pretty open about how I feel about my life, my children, my business, um, just like everything, like my emotions, but I, I don't think I've I've never fully been vulnerable about the ins and outs of how I actually run my business. Um, even though I've been coaching entrepreneurs for a couple of years now, it always kind of felt like 
I'm not ready to publicly own that I know how to run a business. <laughs> like I like I think my limiting belief thoughts were like, you didn't you didn't go to school for this, you know, like who are you? You're only five years in the game, like, you know. And um I'm now coming forth of like, no, I can definitely I, 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 like I think mother motherhood and business is my niche as literally it's thundering. I don't know if you guys can hear it. It's thundering, it's lightning, it is raining, it is all this affirmation of like, this is the move for you, Julissa. So I'm sharing this in real time because I want to be even more authentically vulnerable with my content. In the beginning of my business, I used to do this a lot back in 2020. You know, it's kind of, for me personally, it was easier to be more vulnerable because I was a newbie. It's like, I don't have to know all the things, but there was times in my business where I was like in year three or four that I felt like I had to hide things. I felt like I had to hide the struggles that I was going through as a business owner because I wanted to present as like I had it all together. And the truth of the matter is, is that one, that's probably not super relatable. People need to hear the the, the truth behind what it is to live life. And for me personally, what I'm going to be fo focusing my content on is the reality of being a mother, the reality of being a business owner, the reality of doing both. Right. And um, yeah, so this is beautiful confirmation that this is going to help so many people and I'm so excited. So yes, here it is again. Sorry, y'all. If you know me, you know, I go on a lot of tangents and this is how my brain works. Um, the exercise. So I want you guys to envision, write this down for a for repeated exercise. If you're not driving or if you're in a place where you can do this safely, close your eyes. And I want you to envision what it would feel like to begin doing the thing that scares you most today. If it's running your own business one day, it's like, what would it feel like if you told people that you are beginning a company, starting a company, starting a service that does X, Y, and Z. You don't have to be super clear. It's just the beginning. Don't take yourself so seriously, right? And what does it feel like to, to have people be really excited? Like, wow, that's a great idea. I think you'd be perfect for that. Oh my God, I could definitely see that going off for you, right? You have to create this. You get to create this vision that this is the best thing that ever happened to you for you for your family for your children for your for your happiness for your sense of identity for your purpose this gets to be the best thing that ever happened to you and what does it actually look like right i know for me what i'm working towards is actually like a 10 hour work week right I know for me, what it feels like in my mind's eye is I get to work three to five hours a day, four times a week. And within that time, I am getting everything that I need to get to for the business done with ample time. And I'm creating even more of a ripple effect of the people that I get to help. And I'm making more money. And I'm spending more time with my children. It is a win, win, win. I feel so happy, so elated, so in my path and my purpose. This feels so good. So what is the what is it that feels so good for you? What gets to be the life, the story that you literally get to create because you are that powerful and you do get to do things like this? So what is it? Do you have a company that does X, Y, and Z and they're helping these people by doing what? And how does that feel for you? And you're also juggling your babies, juggling your children. Maybe you're doing this while your kids while your kids are in school. Maybe you're on maternity leave right now and you get to build the bones of your business while you're taking time away from your nine to five on maternity leave right? Um, maybe you get to do this when, you know, a partner or a supporter takes over and um, you're so excited. It doesn't feel like work. That's another part of this beautiful thing about juggling motherhood and business and entrepreneurship. This doesn't feel like a job for me. This very much feels like my soul's purpose. And so when my kiddos go to bed and I have more work to do, it doesn't feel like a burden. 
It feels like, oh, I, I get to do this work. I get to impact people in this way. I get to utilize my gifts in this manner. I get to. This is such a privilege. What an honor it is that I get to show up in life this way. What an what what a blessing that my life is exactly how I prayed for it to be. This gets to be your story too. What we're doing here is we're 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 tapping into the right vibrations of what it feels like to have your dream life come true, but it doesn't have to be so far, far away of one day I'll run a company that does X, Y, and Z. You know, it gets to be the, what do you get? To, what can happen tomorrow? Literally tomorrow. Could you uh, begin writing down a vision for what your business does and how you help people? And could you actually get feedback? Could you ask a friend that would maybe be an ideal client of how this would help them simply for market research so that you can better advertise yourself and your services later? Can you simply get the ball rolling? Take one step forward. Be brave. Be courageous. Do the scary thing. Believe this is possible because it is. What's the one action that you get to take today? to move the needle forward for you and your dream life. If you do this every day and take one actionable step forward, you will be there sooner than you think. And more importantly, the journey is really where it's at. The overcoming the limiting beliefs, the overcoming the hardships, the over the, the fear, the, the excitement, the empowerment, the journey is where it's at. I love who I am and who my business has made me become, truly. I love my um, my loyalty to my dreams. I love the way that I show up as a leader. I love the way that my business has curated me to become a better leader, a better mother, a better team player. I love all that entrepreneurship and motherhood has taught me. And I can't wait to bestow this information onto others that want to listen. So if you're listening and you love this, I hope it was helpful. If you want to come to the webinars, um, sign up for my emails. I'll have my team uh, put in the show notes where you can sign up to receive uh, notifications of when this will be coming out. Like I said, probably sometime in October. It's going to be so good. I can't wait to serve you. I can't wait to help you do this thing that is going to absolutely change your life for the better. That's all I got for this episode. Until next time, my friends. I will talk to you all very soon. Bye for now. Thank you for joining me today on Mindset Mastery Podcast. I hope today's conversation inspired you to embrace your own journey of balancing motherhood and entrepreneurship. Remember, it's all about mastering your mindset to create a life of success and fulfillment in both areas. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe, share it with a friend, and leave a review. Your support helps us reach more incredible moms just like you. Until next time, keep showing up keep growing and mastering your mindset.